Playing guitar licks is such an essential part of becoming a skilled guitar player. It's also true that while there are many licks to choose from, only a few stand out and inspire. Now, if you are a fan of guitar licks, stay tuned because I'll be showcasing five licks in different styles that hopefully will inspire you. Of course, I did my best to make it simple and melodic, so even if you're just starting out and you don't have a great technique yet, you can still try some of these licks. We open up with the uh, popular chord. You can also play like this. And we're gonna be using the E major pentatonic as well as the E major scale. So this is the pentatonic. And of course, this is the major scale. We're gonna mainly play in this box. The opening phrase highlights the E major chord. So we have this beautiful arpeggio-like phrase. We got seven, slide to 11, nine, nine, 11, 13, and 12. Now from here we switch to major scale. So it's 10 and 9, 11, and 9. And then this beautiful and melodic phrase, 11, 12, and 12 on the second string. And then we finish with a slide to fret 14, 9 and 9 on 4th and 3rd string, 12, and a slide from 7 to 9, and we finish on fret number 7 on the 1st string. Now lick number 2 is a jazz phrase in the key of A minor. Let's check it out. What a spicy lick, right? We are in the key of A minor. We open up with two, uh, three chords actually. A minor nine, B minor seven flat five, and E seven. And you can, you know, swing these chords. Now after that, we have this interesting chromatic phrase. Now, I'm basically playing an A minor chord, which is seven, five, five, and five, and eight. But I'm approaching each note chromatically. So I will have seven, six, seven, five, four, five, five, four, five, five, four, five, and eight, seven, eight. And we finish with a beautiful A minor triad. So it's 12, 8, 10, 9. And then this blues phrase. Now it's on the first string, front number 11, 10, 8, and 5. But I'm playing a diminished chord on each of these notes. And the last note on fret 5, of course, it's an A minor chord. So... And we finish with... this beautiful A minor major 7 chord. Now, let's check the Mixolydian lick. Not a huge fan of the fuzz, but for this lick, 
it sounds perfect. This riff can throw you off the first time you listen to it because it sounds like we're playing in a minor key. So you would expect something like But when I play the phrase, it sounds nothing like the E minor key. So I'm playing this uh, E power chord on fret seven and nine, and I approach this E power chord with a D power chord, and then the bass twice, power chord again, and the bass again. Now the reason for this interesting sound is the E mixolydian scale, which is this one. So it's like playing an A major scale over this E chord. Um, so we consider this E major to be the fifth degree of the A major scale. Now the riff is this one. So we start with the fret five and seven, five and seven. And then we have um, six and seven, six and seven. And then we go on the third string and we have seven, six, seven, six. And we finish with seven on the third string. We slide to fret nine. And we finish on the second string, fret number nine, which is basically the major third of E. interesting sounding concept without going too crazy with music theory. Now, next lick is the octaves lick. Now for this riff you need three things, stretchy fingers, a lot of rhythm, and a lot of delay. Now why is this riff so interesting? We are in the key of E major, and we are playing octaves on the fourth and second string. So it's this octave shape. And I'm playing 9, 12, 7 and 10, 6 and 9, and four and seven. However, I also keep the first open string for each octave. So the top E string adds so much color to the octaves. The reason why it's so challenging though is because you have to be able to mute all the other strings. So I'm strumming all the strings. But 6th string muted, 5th string is muted, the 4th string is ringing out, 3rd string is muted, 2nd string is ringing out, 1st string is ringing out. So I'm, I use the middle finger to mute the 6th and 5th string and I use the index finger to mute the third string, so I can strum all the strings. You can also make it easier to play. For example, you could just play second string with the first open string. Now, 
Uh, next click, I'm gonna show you something that I've been playing on my acoustic guitar, actually. I played it on the electric guitar and I loved it. So let me show it to you. I'm such a huge fan of symmetrical chords. I mean, chords that you can move around without changing shape. And this is a, an example of how amazing the guitar can be. Uh, I mean, in this case, I'm playing a C-sharp minor, E major, and E major, but I'm using the same chord shape. So it's four and four, seven, seven, and 12, 12. I also add the first open string. Simple yet powerful concept. I love it. Now, which one is your favorite lick? Um, let me know in the comment section down below. I'm gonna leave you to practice um, all those phrases. Take it step by step, guys. Enjoy this lesson, and I'll see you next time.